The leader has not activated. Good morning, Hi, everyone. It's... Oh, sorry. I can hear you. I can hear you, Kristen. Um, why don't we go ahead and get started officially? Thank you, everyone, for joining us, um, for listening in on the My Life Check in Hands as one of our new digital uh, tools for your employee population. So, again, my name is Heather Gavris. I am one of our uh, team members with our Workplace Health Solutions team. And really, this uh, webinar opportunity is going to allow you to learn more about Life Simple 7 Science and the composite heart health score, which will help you as an employer really monitor um, the health of your employees over time. Uh, certainly, you will have a demonstration of our new tool, My Life Check in Hands, and, and understand how the Workplace Health Achievement Index and My Life Check in Hands can help you um, make those improvements of the health of your uh, workforce as well as your workplace. Uh, joining me today are uh, two of my colleagues. Um, one is Adela Santana. Adela is a program evaluation analyst uh, within the Center for Workplace Health Research and Evaluation at the American Heart Association. And Kristen Pham is the senior program manager for Workplace Health Solutions. Um, just a couple housekeeping items. Um, we are recording today's session. Uh, so if you are in a uh, public setting and are not muted, just if you can make sure um, your phone or computer is uh, uh, muted, that would be great. Um, also, just throughout the duration of the presentation, um, if you do have questions, please go ahead and uh, type those into the chat box, and certainly um, we will address those questions uh, appropriately. Um, at the uh, uh, time and place uh, throughout the presentation. Um, we will make available uh, a recording of today's presentation. Um, just know that will be forthcoming um, in the next couple weeks um, uh, as a, as a follow-up to today's webinar. So uh, with that, um, I am going to turn it over to my colleague, um, Adela Santana, who's really going to uh, kick us off and, and begin to talk a little bit more about uh, the Workplace Health Achievement Index and also Life Simple 7 Science. Adela? Thank you, Heather, and good morning, everyone. It's very nice to be here with you this morning or this afternoon, depending on where you're joining us from. So I'm very happy to speak to you all about, um, about the index. So the index to the Workplace Health Achievement Index is an online tool that is designed to help your organization assess the quality, the comprehensiveness, and also the effectiveness of, the, of your workplace program. Some of you might be familiar with the AHA's older fit-friendly tool. Since 2007, that tool uh, was used to help companies assess their wellness structure and processes. Uh, a few years ago, however, the AHA renewed its scientific commitment to workplace health. Um, so AHA researchers and volunteers, they came together to publish um, a presidential advisory in 2015 that really took a look at the existing evidence supporting the effectiveness of health promotion and well-being programs, recognition programs, and employee health management scorecards available at that time. So as a result, to improve cardiovascular health and to reduce cardiovascular disease and stroke, that presidential advisory recommended a more optimal approach for assessing the comprehensiveness of workplace health promotion and well-being programs, which involved the use of Life Simple 7 metrics for assessing the health of the workforce. So through these metrics, this assessment tool, um, therefore, can help offer companies a way to evaluate the effectiveness of their workplace health programs as well as the impact of cardiovascular health risk of its employees. So what followed from all that uh, was a repurposing and improvement of the AHA's fit-friendly tool to become the Workplace Health Achievement Index, which was launched um, two years ago now in, in 2016. So we're currently in our, in our uh, upcoming third year of the index for 2018. Um, and the last thing I'll, I'll say about the, the slide right here that you um, 
see kind of broken up at the very top there, is really what the index does to assess the culture of health in the workplace. It includes 55 question items that are organized into seven sections, which are based on seven best practice pillars of effective workplace health programs. And these questions really help to uh, assess your organization's structure and processes around workplace health, and they answer the question, is the workplace healthy? And then what you also have, in addition, is uh, the index also includes some performance measures um, that are based on the organization's employee level health data, which are aligned to AHA's Life Simple 7. And I'll say a little bit more about those in a second. So these metrics, the Life Simple 7 metrics, are validated measures of cardiovascular health, and they include seven health behaviors and health factors that are critical to achieving cardiovascular health. So you see them down there at the end of the screen, not smoking, eating healthier, getting physically active, achieving and maintaining a healthy weight, managing blood pressure, controlling cholesterol, and reducing blood sugar. So what companies can do is that they can submit employee level data based on these Life Simple 7 metrics through one of three available methods, including an option to submit aggregated health data. Um, all the data then are, are stored, they're processed in a secure HIPAA compliant third party database. And they're then used to calculate the points that are received for the three performance measures. And the three performance measures include points that you can achieve based on the percentage of employee health data that's provided. Second, points are also awarded based on the workforce's overall heart health, based on Life Simple 7. And points are also awarded in the second and subsequent years of participation for year-to-year -year improvement. So why did the AHA scientific statement recommend that we use Life Simple 7 as metrics for monitoring the health of employees? So studies show that improving Life Simple 7 factors reduces the risk of death from cardiovascular risk. And from research we know, for example, that people who maintain optimal levels for three to four of the factors cut their risk of heart-related death by more than 50%. And there is also scientific evidence to demonstrate that improving heart health has resounding positive effects in other areas as well. So for instance, we have studies to support that moving toward ideal heart health improves overall health, productivity, quality of life, as well as longevity. And then moving toward an ideal heart health is also associated with improved cognitive function in younger and older adults and associated with lower risk for cancer, for diabetes, and depression. So when you think about what moving towards ideal heart health um, can do, not just for improving cardiovascular health, but other health areas as well, um, consider this. So Life Simple 7 metrics represent seven out of the top 10 most costly risk factors for employers and account for at least 20% of U.S. companies' annual health care expenditures. We have some studies that show that reducing the modifiable risk factors of cardiovascular disease, uh, which are also the same risk factors for type 2 diabetes, some cancers, chronic respiratory diseases, and some mental illnesses, among workers can potentially yield a $700 savings per employee per year of all of these direct costs. So to illustrate the positive impact of an ideal heart health profile, um, take a look at what happens to a group of men and women at age 50 over the span of 45 year, five years, which is what's represented in these two graphs. So at age 50, none of these individuals had any risk for heart disease, and those who maintained these optimal or ideal levels of all Life Simple 7 metrics, as represented by the lowest dashed line in each graph, at the end of those 45 years, those individuals had significantly lower cardiovascular risk compared to the men and women who did not have all ideal levels and who perhaps smoked or were primarily sedentary or had hypertension, for example. And the point with this um, information here is that it really is never too late in life to improve your cardiovascular health. And we know that health may naturally depreciate with age, but we also know that we could invest um, invest in health and that those investments, even at that later age, can have a significant positive impact down the line. 
So we've talked already about at Simple 7 Metrics, but I'm showing you this slide just to give you an example of how each metric is broken down into the poor, intermediate, and ideal levels. So uh, with blood glucose, for example, um, you'll be put in the intermediate range if your levels are inclusive and between 100 and 125 or treated to goal, meaning that with medication, the goal of less than 100 milligrams per deciliter is reached. Um, and then blood sugar levels above 126 put you in the poor category and then less then 100 milligrams of glucose um, in a deciliter of blood puts you in the ideal category. So now, as I get to the end of my section, I want to share with you um, some results from a biannual employee health survey that was commissioned by the AHA's Chief Executive Office or CEO Roundtable, um, Roundtable and uh, a survey that was conducted by Nielsen. So these are data from 2014 survey of over 2,000 employees, and I want to draw your attention to two findings. So first, we found that, the, that people surveyed tended to overestimate their health. So for instance, 39% um, self-identified as having ideal heart health when actually um, based on biometric uh, data, we know that only 1% were determined to actually have an ideal heart health profile um, based on those metrics. What we also found is um, we had a significant portion of individuals who are diagnosed with chronic disease um, also identify as having very good heart health. Relatedly, also in this survey, we found that very few people um, knew their numbers, knew their biometric numbers to begin with. So, for example, on the table in the right, what we see is a clear majority knew their weight, but many did not know their body mask index nor their fasting blood glucose levels. So in, in this sample of employees, the, the self-reported perception of health is telling a different story of their measured life simple seven metrics um, that, that's different from, from what their perception is versus what their actual numbers are. And what this offers to us is an opportunity that if we begin further educating individuals about harder to see indicators of health, such as cholesterol, blood pressure, and blood glucose, that can essentially um, be a signal and motivator to, to, to lead to better, um, to better health, better behavior change. So from a behavioral health perspective, for example, we know that individuals equipped with actionable knowledge of their personal health um, might be better equipped then to engage in the positive behavior change that leads to that improved heart health. So for my last slide, I'm just going to leave you with a snapshot of what the bigger picture is. So on this graph in red, you can see the percent of individuals in the poor category, yellow is intermediate, and green represents ideal. Now, we would love to have everyone in, uh, across all seven metrics be ideal. So we want to see all green across this. But in fact, less than 1% of the population of U.S. adults um, fit that ideal category. And so observe where we do see the most green. We've made steady progress with smoking, and we've even seen a steady uptake in physical activity in the past couple of years. But most Americans have very poor diets, which we know has downstream consequences for biometrics um, and body mass index. And because this graph also breaks down the prevalence by age category, we can also see that the U.S. population becomes less healthy as we get older. So for example, uh, if we look at blood pressure, the percent of U.S. adults in ideal drops from 61 among 20 to 49-year-olds to 21% among 50-year-olds and older. But again, here's the bright side. So as we saw in the men versus women graph earlier, we know that there's an opportunity to age healthy. So that's the message I'm going to leave you all with, is, is that opportunity for improving heart health of individuals via the workplace and from the science um, based on Life Simple 7. We know, we know that based on those metrics and based on um, that, that really changing those modifi modifiable factors can lead to better downstream effects. So with that, I'm going to turn it over back to Kristen to talk about My Life Check Enhance which is a tool based on Life Simple 7. Thank you, Adela. Uh, one of the things that we're really excited about with the launch of this tool, it was launched April 1st of this year, 
Um, and we really made a lot of changes that we really think are going to encourage engagement from the employee perspective as well as um, really provide actual guidance for employers. So as far as our features, we did uh, revise the layout and graphics so that we really improve the look and the navigation of previous tools. Um, we do have more information infographics that really help uh, better explain and educate uh, employees on how to answer the questions. Uh, we have expanded employer reporting. Uh, we also have the ability to compare uh, corporate versus the business and geographic locations. So this comes uh, really handy for those that are uh, part of larger corporations. And then the ability to segregate by employee versus adult dependent. Uh, so the adult dependents are included in the tool for free. Uh, just to give you the cost, uh, as we go through this for the employees, we do charge $6 per eligible employee per year. Um, as we're going through this, I just wanted to highlight some future enhancements that uh, we will be adding. So uh, while everything is currently focused on heart health, which uh, does expand to other chronic illnesses as well, um, there really is a place for us to add other metrics such as sleep, stress, depression, alcohol abuse, and preventive screening. Um, we will be seeking NCQA certification, um, which really helps, um, especially if we're trying to promote to those Medicare and Medicaid populations. Um, we will be integrating my Simple 7 Engage Health Advocacy programs as well. So when I say um, health advocacy programs, these are programs based on each metric. So if I need to focus or improve on a certain metric, then I would be recommended a program um, that takes me through uh, different activities and educational components to really help encourage me to um, begin the road to behavior change. Um, and finally, we will be launching the American Heart Association's Health Screening Services. Um, so with this, we'll be able to add the ability to auto-populate lab values. All right, and I will go ahead and share my screen. So give me one second. And if someone could please let me know when they're able to see it. I can see it. I can see it. So for this, I'm just going to set up um, a dummy account. So the user experience will be a little bit different for setting up the account, but this is just for the purposes of the demo. All right, so the first screen that um, the employee lands on is an overview screen. Um, so this is a four-minute assessment, and we really try to keep it um, short and succinct and make it feel like a four-minute assessment. Um, one of the things that's very different um, between what we offer and what most health risk assessments offer is that um, while it's short and succinct, um, it also does provide the ability for employees to go back in whenever they would like and see updates um, once they make a behavior change so they can really see how that impacts their heart health. Um, most health risk assessments you'll see being done once a year and usually take a lot longer and have an output that um, most people don't read. So we really wanted to frame this in a way that um, would raise awareness and help people take action to improve their health. Um, so we really do just let them know on this overview screen what they're getting themselves into and then spell out what the Life Simple 7 metrics are. So first we'll just go through and fill out um, profile and activities. And I'm just going to put in some fake information. Um, if I did say that I was pregnant or breastfeeding, um, then it would just let me know that BMI is not um, the best indicator for, um, for my weight there. Uh, and then for, it does give me the actual number for BMI and the category that I'm in. Uh, for smoking status, we have four different options. So we ask if 
I currently smoke, if I've recently quit, if I quit more than 12 months ago, or if I've never been a smoker. Um, currently, this tool is only available in the U.S. Um, that will be one of our future um, business goals to expand it to other um, international entities, but right now it is only available in the United States. Um, so when I talked about the infographics we added, it starts with physical activity. Uh, we do ask about the number of minutes of moderate versus vigorous physical activity, and we wanted to actually provide people with an accurate definition, definition of this, so then also um, provide examples so they know how to better classify their activity. So similarly, we did the same thing with the diet component. So all of the icons are clickable except for the sodium one on this. Uh, so when I asked me how many one cup, how many one cup servings of vegetables I've had each day, it's helpful to know what actually equals a one cup serving. So for example, two cups of lettuce or raw greens would equal a one cup serving, um, and then it also compares it to other um, cut up or um, whole vegetables. And we do the same thing with fruit. And then fish, we just focus on really what a serving size is. So it's usually a good rule of thumb when it comes to, to meat in general to keep it about the size of the palm of your hand or a deck of cards. Um, whole grains. Um, a few examples of whole grains that people might always not think about. Um, and then what equals a one ounce serving there. And then with sugar sweetened beverages, uh, we really wanted to focus on the number of added calories uh, from added sugars. So, for example, a soda has 150 calories from added sugars uh, versus a glass of lemonade that would have 100. If you just add sugar yourself, then one teaspoon is equivalent to 16 calories. And in the sodium statements, we've uh, found are um, really good proxies for of sodium consumption, we know that most Americans consume twice as much sodium as the recommended amount. Um, so we ask if you avoid eating prepackaged and processed foods, uh, if you rarely eat out, but when you do, you seek lower sodium options, and you avoid salt when you're cooking at home. And then with flat values, uh, so this is where uh, with the ability to add the um, screening services and pre-populating lab values, someone would be able to look at this tool, and if they'd already gone through a biometric screening, um, see those lab values populated there. Um, one of the reasons, um, as you saw Adela, Adela present earlier, is that most people do not know their numbers. So uh, we actually do have an option, otherwise, saying I do not know my blood pressure. Um, if that is the case, they will still receive a heart health score. Um, the data is substituted in from the latest NHANES survey. Um, so that data is based on age, gender, and ethnicity. So they will still get a heart score, it just would not be as accurate as if they actually knew their numbers. Uh, we also ask if you take medication, so that does factor into the algorithm as well. And then with blood sugar, uh, we ask if you have diabetes in addition to I don't know or taking medication. And then finally, we get to uh, if you've been diagnosed with any conditions. Um, so these conditions will be expanded when we add the other um, additional factors, um, such as stress, sleep, and depression, but um, this does focus on um, heart-specific conditions. And then finally, I get to my results screen. So you can see that my heart health score was a 5 out of 10. And we really wanted to provide people with um, areas that we suggest that they focus on. So we did break it up into where they should focus, um, where they can still improve, and what they should celebrate. If I click on a single icon, I do receive um, general recommendations as far as what you should be doing in that category. 
Um, and there is a video that's really shot from a consumer perspective, so walking someone through the journey that they've been on and improving that behavior. And when I go down here, so there is a summary statement included. Um, so it does tell me uh, when I need to take action, and we definitely refer to a personal physician for several lifestyle changes, and this one is suggesting I see my physician for blood pressure or cholesterol. So we also have health actions as part of this tool. And there are three health actions that are generated um, at one time on the screen, and it is based on how you answer the assessment. So I said that I was a smoker, so the first one that comes up is learn about my triggers. Um, so when cigarette cravings hit this week, grab a journal and take a moment to write down while you're having the craving. Um, if I select that I'm in, this is trackable over a 12-week period of time. I will receive an automatic email each week to go back in and log whether or not I completed that activity for the week. Um, if I get sick of those emails, I can say unsubscribe at any time. I can also opt out at any time. Um, so if I go through these health actions and determine I don't like any of them, I can also click a button to see more actions. Um, and just to show you, I'm going to start the dashboard. I'm going to sign out and sign back into another account. You can see what it's like if I actually retake the assessment over time. All right, so when I go to my dashboard, uh, it does show a heart health score, um, and I'm able to track each time I take it and see how my heart health score has changed over time. I am also able to segment it by Life Simple 7 metric. So if I want to look at blood pressure, for example, maybe I'm in a self-monitoring program for blood pressure, I can go back in and log it over time and see how I've done. Um, it does have connectivity to several um, apps and trackers. Uh, we are looking to expand on this tracker list. Um, but right now, just connectivity to Fitbit and Jawbone along with these apps. So it does not automatically update uh, the assessment to correspond with the number of stats or the miles that you've um, taken that day, but it does show the dashboard next to your dashboard so you'll be able to see the difference and log back in. Similarly, if I'm on my Fitbit dashboard, I'll be able to see that I'm connected to my live check. All right. Um, I think at this point we can open it up to questions. I don't see any coming in. All right. Well, I will go ahead and go to the next slide if uh, we have any more questions coming. Oh, so from Angela, she says, who are you wanting to complete the My Life Check? Um, My Life Check is geared toward employees. So, um, and I say that while we're um, in the workplace health space, we'll also be expanding to different community initiatives as well. Um, but my life check is for the individual employee to complete. Um, what the employer would see is in the admin portal, um, they would be able to see um, a breakdown of their aggregated data. So, uh, for example, I'll just take the American Heart Association. Uh, we're divided up into seven different affiliates. So I would be able to see how my organization is performing as a whole, and I could also look and see how each affiliate is doing. So maybe in the Southwest affiliate, I might need to work on um, diet a lot more. So as the wellness coordinator, that would help me focus my efforts in that area on diet. Uh, maybe in the Western states, it might be physical activity. So, um, it will provide a breakdown by Life Simple 7 metric, as well as provide you information with, um, with participation and um, the number of people or the percentage of people that actually know their lab values, so that could also help with um, 
with if you need to schedule an on-site screening. Uh, we definitely can send this presentation out. Um, so we'll send that out in a follow-up. Um, as Heather mentioned, we'll also be sending out a recording, so uh, we'll follow these at the same time. Where do you address depression, alcohol abuse, and or cancer? So this is one of the upcoming enhancements. Um, so that will be an add-on um, to my life check enhance. It won't be automatically built into to this one, but it will be an option that you can add on. So we're expecting that to be available in early 2018. Um, the metrics will adding our sleep, stress, depression, alcohol abuse, um, preventative screening, and um, I believe we're also considering just asking for the overall um, perception of your health. Um, Um, the cost of the program is $6 per eligible employee per year. Um, adult dependents are included for free, so they don't factor into that cost. We only charge for the eligible employees. Um, this price was come up with after doing um, a very thorough market scan, and we are coming in at the very low end of the market, um, so it is very competitive pricing for that. And then Roger asks, in the section on salt, why not give an option that includes we shop for lower salt food items? Um, I think that's definitely um, a great suggestion. Uh, I know it gets a little bit tricky, and Heather might be able to speak a little bit more to this on how to assess lower versus low sodium options. Um, but Heather, I don't know if you have anything to add for for the why in those questions for Adela. From my understanding, I think from when this question was first developed, it uh, it was narrowed down to three options just for the sake of simplicity in terms of um, being able to, to respond to the same questions. But I do think that is a, a really good consideration. Um, yeah, we can definitely think about it, look into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you, Roger. We'll definitely take that back to the to the team and the center. Yeah. Okay. How do you recommend employers promote the My Life Check Enhance tool? Uh, and I'll let Heather and Adela add on to this. But uh, one of the ways that we usually um, have employers recommend is they usually build it into their wellness portal. So it might be something if you already have a wellness portal and you offer incentives. Um, usually incentives do help people um, get started on the tool and um, really get their foot in the door and see what it's all about. Uh, we do have a communications toolkit um, that we will provide that provides uh, template newsletters, um, emails from the CEO, a PowerPoint for employees, and talking points, FAQs. So, a few things that can really help you um, start planning. Um, if you do have a health fair coming up, then that's usually a great time to really start that conversation as well and have a promotion around the health fair, um, especially if you do a biometric screening there. They could do um, this on site, and if you have a follow-up with the nurse, they could kind of talk about um, the results that they would like um, as well as what their actual numbers mean um, if that's something that y'all do. Um, otherwise, we definitely have um, a lot of staff with some great expertise that can certainly help you um, figure out the best way to promote it. And I would just add some of the, the some of the strategies that I think AHA does a really good job of doing is um, involving leadership and communicating about my life check enhance. So for us as employees, we're encouraged to update those numbers quarterly, um, even if that doesn't mean necessarily that the numbers change, but it, it continuously keeps us engaged. And like Kristen said there, um, they're linked to, um, to incentives, so most directly, you know, you can get points in, in the health assessment platform, and it, 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 it comes off as, as fun for employees to, you know, to go back in there, see how their numbers are doing, seeing how, you know, are they making any improvements in health, and you can actually visually see it. So I think that 
that sort of engagement, I think, does a good job of, of keeping employees um, engaged with the tool. Thanks, Adala. And then Kim asked, how will preventative screenings be provided? So we will, um, we are currently working with another organization um, that is actually has experience in the on-site screening business. So it'll be a partnership with them and they will actually provide the on-site screening. So um, the vendor we're in the, in the process of finalizing things with um, does on-site screenings at organizations with a follow-up consultation with the nurse. They um, use LabCorp, someone would prefer to go to a lab. Um, they also have home kits, so if you have remote employees that um, don't have access to either, they can send them a home kit. Um, so they actually do provide the screenings, um, and then they'll also, if you don't use their services, uh, we'll also be able to work with them to just import data into the tool to pre-populate those lab values. Um, so again, the, the organization that we're currently um, speaking with is on-site health diagnostics. Um, the cost of the screening, uh, that's something that we still need to work out all of the details um, with. So once those um, items are finalized, if you're interested in learning more, we can certainly send out that information. I think you might have had one question up there that was... I don't know, I think you got them all. Okay. Yeah, and I will go ahead and mute off. One else just has anything to add. No, uh, I'm not. And we'll stand extra up. Extra time. Let's know our feelings in detail. Thank you, Governor. All right. So I did unmute the lines. If anyone else has a question and would like to speak up, please do. Yeah. Uh, you were talking about adding 600 new jobs in the area and the opening of these new facilities. What will be the process? for people to be able to apply for these positions over time and when will that actually start? I think we got a question that was meant for... They will be posted in different areas. They will, be, they will come from a different, uh, variety of different companies. It won't be only Mercedes jobs. Uh, we expect to also be creating jobs uh, with uh, other companies. Sir, I mean, I hear someone talking, but it's really faint. I'm not sure if that's meant for us or if that's meant for another call you're on. Hi, Kristen, it's Heather. I think that probably was somebody else, um, you know, listening into another call. So I will just ask the audience, um, again, if you have any other questions, um, we have unmuted the phone, so feel free to, uh, you know, ask the group uh, the, the question now, or certainly um, you can just, you know, enter it into the chat feature. So we did get one question, would an AHA rep come on site to make a presentation? Uh, I think that's something we can certainly uh, look into depending on where you're at and connect you with local staff. Um, so if you would like to just send a request, um, our email address is whs at heart.org and we can certainly work with you on that. Are there any other questions or, or comments? Yes, who would you say was going to be providing the health screenings? Uh, On-site health diagnostics is who we are in final discussions with, if you want to look them up, um, but nothing has been finalized right now, but we are in the process of that and we'll provide more information when we can. Okay, but you don't have to use them, you're saying? No, you do not. Um, if you use somebody else, then we will be able to work with them as far as just importing your lab data, your data into the assessment. If you would like that feature to be added to pre-populate the lab data. So for the $6, is, is that include the enhancement piece that's coming out in January and the auto-populate of the lab data? 
No, we will have a menu of offerings. So um, it's, you can decide that you want to just use the, the My Life Check Enhanced by itself, or if you want some of the buy-up options, you can mix and match depending on um, what you would like. So um, we can, once that pricing is finalized as well, um, we can let you know, but um, those are enhancements that are currently in progress, so we do not have a set date on when they will be available. Thank you. Would any of the um, AHA representatives come on site to give a, a talk or a presentation, just like you've done it now? just for a larger audience? Yeah, I mean, I think we can certainly work with you on that, mm -hmm. and Heather um, mm -hmm. really does work closely with the field staff, so she uh -huh. would be the best one to really help assess um, what would be appropriate, depending on where, you're, where you are and everything like that. Mm -hmm. um, so if you can send an email to us, um, okay. and then just let us know, like, your organization and where you're at located, then we can okay. we can see okay. what we can do. The same um, email, whs at heart.com, org. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. At heart.org. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you have any way that we could demo this, at, like our employee health wellness committee? Mm-hmm. Okay. How would we do that? Would we just have the chairperson go through? Boom. Well, we do have a, a slide deck we could send you with screenshots. That might be the easiest way um, if you're trying to go through it with um, another internal audience. Um, but if you want to actually demo it, um, we can let, let you go ahead and email us with that request and we can connect. Okay. Yes, if you have specific requests, um, again, feel free to email us at the whs at heart.org email address. WH, you said whs as, as in Sam? As, as in Sam, correct, at heart.org. Okay, already, thank you. Mm -hmm. Are any of these changes going to affect the uh, um, certification process for your workplace? When you say certification, can you expand on that? Do you, are you referencing uh, our recognition program that's associated with the Workplace Health Achievement Index? Mm -hmm. Yes. The, the bronze, gold, whatever. Yeah, so the My Life Check enhanced results, and we didn't go through the actual uh, different measures in the index in this call, but um, My Life Check Enhance can be used to be satisfied the performance uh, measure criteria that Adela reviewed earlier. Um, so one of the key things is to make sure you have a minimum of 25% participation to begin getting points. So um, usually instead of do you help with that um, or just coming up with creative ways to promote uh, the program, but um, yeah, so it certainly satisfy um, part of those requirements. Okay, thank you. Any other remaining questions? <clears throat> no? Okay. Um, again, uh, this is Heather Gavras. We really appreciate you taking time um, to learn about My Life Check Enhance and how that may be an added benefit uh, for your employees as well as for yourself as an employer. Um, again, you will be receiving a quick thank you note uh, later today. And um, before we wrap up, I, I, I know that Kristen probably wants to just share a few reminders here for the group. Um, I can go through these very quickly. 
Um, for the individual that was referencing the index, uh, we are in our 2018 cycle, as Adela mentioned. Um, that uh, does end on March 31st, which is our annual uh, deadline date. Uh, so that's March 31st of 2018. Uh, we have publicly recognized and announced our 2017 index companies of their recognitions. Um, that formal announcement actually took place earlier this month on the 12th. And uh, companies that have opted in to be publicly recognized uh, certainly uh, did receive a copy of their recognition toolkit on September 5th. Um, then just yesterday, uh, we released, or on the 19th, excuse me, um, we released uh, an announcement of our gold and silver companies in a special edition of Forbes. Um, and so that is available online um, currently. Um, and again, you can go ahead and look at our uh, recognized companies um, on our website, which is heart.org backslash WHS recognition. Um, so again, we really do appreciate your time today. Uh, just be on the lookout for a follow-up email. Um, one will come quickly today, and then subsequently we will send out um, the recording. Um, if you do have a specific need in the meantime, uh, feel free to reach out to us at WHS as in Sam at heart.org. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.